makers of Hallmark greeting cards present The Only Wise Man, starring Paul Lucas. Now to preside over our program, here is your Hallmark host, Les Tremaine. Thank you, Cy Harris. It's nice to have you with us. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a Merry Christmas to you all from the makers of Hallmark greeting cards. You know, Christmas means so much to everyone that we've, well, you might say we've wrapped it up in so much tinsel and holly and decorated it with so much glitter that we sometimes lose the real meaning of the day. We believe you'll like our play tonight because it's a simple story that brings us the spirit of Christmas, and it actually happened. It's a true story. Our leading role is played by the famous star of screen and stage... Paul Lucas. You may have seen him in Watch on the Rhine, The Doll's House, in any of a long list of successes. We're happy to have a star of such magnitude for our Hallmark show this Christmas night. It's an honor to present Paul Lucas. Merry Christmas, Paul. Thank you. The same to you, Les. Did you have a good day? Oh, wonderful. But then Christmas is always a wonderful time. And you're making it happier for us by starring in our show tonight, Paul. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. You know, it's great to do a play that's based on a true story. And you ought to be happy too, Les. Talking about the product that means so much to everybody at Christmas. Oh, but we're not going to do much talking about Hallmark cards tonight. Well, you don't need to. I imagine most everybody listening has received Hallmark cards today and... If they've been listening to you, they've turned them over and looked on the back. Yes, for those three little words that tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. But now we're due in that little town in Texas where our story took place on Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you with their good wishes on the Reader's Digest radio edition, The Only Wise Man, starring Paul Lucas. <laughs> sound? Well, if you lived in Centervale, Texas, you'd know that sound. Everybody in Centervale, when he heard the squeak of those rusty wheels, knew that Uncle Henry was coming. Uncle Henry always pulled along behind him a high cart. You never could tell, said Uncle Henry, when someone might want the old papers and magazines taken out of his attic, or a ton of coal fetched into his cellar. And that was the reason for the cart, to carry things in. Hello, Uncle Henry. Oh, Mr. Perry. I have no time, Uncle Henry. But, Mr. Perry, Mr. Perry, wait a minute. Well, what is it? Want to make it snappy? I haven't got all day. Why? Where would you be going on Sunday, Mr. Perry? To church. Oh. Oh, yes, church. I forgot about church. Ah, and everybody in the community realizes you've forgotten about church, Uncle Henry. Yes, church. But that was this morning. Why do you go to church on Sunday afternoon? I'm going to a rehearsal, if you insist on knowing. Rehearsal? Yes. The new minister is putting on a pageant for Christmas. Oh. I, uh, I'm one of the, uh, wise men. Oh. Well, it's only make-believe, huh? Huh. Well, that's neither here nor there, Uncle Henry. You, uh, stop me? Why? Well, because I wanted to talk with you. About what? I wanted to ask you, you got any odd jobs for me to do around your house, Mr. Perry? Is that all you had to ask? It's very important to me, Mr. Perry. Well, the answer is no. Oh, do you think you have some soon? No, I'm too busy with my Christmas work to have time to look up odd jobs for you. So, uh, goodbye. <laughs> It's Uncle Henry. Well, hello, Mr. Wells. Well, 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 Uncle Henry. And how's the, the big businessman today? Uh, <laughs> you got any work for me to do, Mr. Wells? Oh, you're a go-getter. <laughs> a great old go-getter you are, Uncle Henry. Why, I wouldn't be surprised if you were president of Standard Oil someday. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice, but 
That's for someday. Right now, I want to be president of cleaning your barn out, maybe. <laughs> oh, you're quite a card, Uncle Henry. You're quite a character. <laughs> hmm? Didn't know this. Thought I was only workman. <laughs> oh, you top me every time. You're a real character. A real character. <laughs> Thank you. But you got any work I can do? I don't know what this town would do for laughs without you, Uncle Henry. Well, I don't know what I do for work without this town, Mr. Wells. <laughs> Won't let me get away from the subject. Uh, uh, well, I tell you, Uncle Henry, the fact is I don't have any work that wants doing right now. Oh, well, that is too bad. But, uh, well, look, I can spare a dollar. Oh, no, no, thank you. I work for money. <laughs> oh, you are a character, Uncle Henry. <laughs> oh, Uncle Henry. Uncle Henry. Yes? Oh, oh, Mr. Talbot. Yes, Uncle Henry. I've been looking all over for you. You? You look for me, Mr. Talbot? Yes, yep. You never looked for me before. Well, I'm perfectly capable of doing my own work ordinarily, but now I've got to hire someone. Oh, it's good. I, I like to work. Well, there are various odd jobs at my house. There's some rug beating to do before snow falls, or old papers to be taken away. There's a little carpentry, and there's a loose washer in the washroom sink. Oh, good. It's all my kind of work. Ah, then you'll come. You'll do it. Oh, sure, sure. Fine. Uh, but tell me something, Mr. Tarbo. Yes, how come you hire me? You? You never hired me before. I'm too busy to do this work myself. Too busy? You never was too busy before, no matter how busy you were. Well, I am now. <laughs> I'm rehearsing every night. Uh, I'm in the pageant. Pageant? Oh, yes, I forgot. Uh, you never go to church. Uh, the church is having a pageant. As you very well know, if you were any kind of a proper Christian... You are in it? I am. I'm one of the wise men. One of the wise men? Oh, congratulations. Mr. Perry is one of the wise men, too. He told me. Yeah, that, uh, that's true. And Mr. Wells. Oh, Mr. Wells, the wise men? Wise men laugh all the time like Mr. Wells. I don't imagine they do. They got a new minister up to the church now? Ah, I'm glad to see you know something about the church. Oh, I don't. I just thought they must have a new minister. Last year, I hear nothing about pageants, and this year, everyone talks pageant, pageant, pageant. And everybody's a wise man this year. There are just three wise men. Yeah. You know, I think the minister is wise man, too. This is first time anybody gets Mr. Perry or Mr. Wells or you to do anything for the church or anything. Just what do you mean by that? Well, it's true. Mr. Perry is always too busy, too full of business, running his store. Mr. Wells, he's too lazy, and you... <laughs> You might have to hire somebody to do some of your odd jobs if you do anything for the church. So you never did anything before. Are you implying that I'm stingy? Me? Oh, no, no. How could you think it? You'd better not. I'm going to be paying you good money for those jobs at my house. And I won't have my reputation run down by you. Oh, no, no. Still, there may be something in what you say about Wells and Perry. Uh, you know, Uncle Henry... Our new minister is really a very remarkable fellow. So? Yes. Why, do you know that he's brought more Christmas spirit to this town than, than anyone would have thought possible? Hmm. Yes. Oh, it's, it's not just a pageant. We're to have a big Christmas party, the whole community. Not only the members of our church, you understand. Everybody. Why, that new minister has imbued all of us with the Christmas spirit. It's very, very good. It's wonderful. Do you know, I believe he could make even you feel the spir spirit of Christmas. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Even that? Yes, he's a remarkable fellow. Uh, uh, what is the name of this new minister? Graham. Why? Well, uh, I think I'd go meet that fellow. He seems like quite a fellow. <laughs> In there. You talking to me? Yes. I see you sit in the window reading. I think maybe I say hello. Well, hello. You the new minister? Yes. I think maybe I come in and talk with you. Right ahead. I'll open the door for you. 
Come right in. Thank you. Sit down. Ah, thank you. Well, Uncle Henry, what is it? You know my name, huh? Yes, I recognize you from the car. You heard bad things about me, huh? Yes. Well, I heard good things about you. <laughs> well, I'm glad of it. You got Mr. Wells, Mr. Perry, and Mr. Talbot to do something for the church. Is uh, that one of the good things you heard? Well, I call it good. I thought you didn't care about the church. Well, I don't. Just, I think it's good for Mr. Perry to do something except business. For Mr. Talbot to do something for nothing, and for Mr. Wells to do something. <laughs> <laughs> so confidentially, I agree with you on all three counts. You're pretty good fellow. I think you're all right yourself, Uncle Henry. Except I don't go to church, eh, huh, Mr. No, Graham? No, no, I, I never put it that the people need the church. I always say the church needs people. Ah, uh, it's smart. I can see that's how you get these fellows to be wise men, huh? <laughs> you uh, certainly see through me, Uncle Henry. Well, I am a pretty old fella. How about helping us out at church? You want our jobs done? Sure, sure. Oh, I'd pay you for that. I mean, how about doing something for nothing? What? Coming. To church? Yes. Is that all? That's all. Except then you will want more. Well, maybe. Well, I never go to church. Why? It's not real. You mean the sermons aren't real? Yeah. Well, I think my sermons are different. I, I hope they are. Well, we see. You mean you'll come? Yeah, because you are a nice fella. I'll come to church next Sunday. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Graham, I want you to know that that sermon of yours moved me deeply. Well, thank you very much indeed, Mr. Perry. It really made me cry, Mr. Graham. It touched me that much. A great sermon. A profound sermon. You make me very happy. Thank you. Not at all. Well, it's you. It's me. So you came, Uncle Henry. Yes, I come. Well, good crowd, by golly. Hmm? Uh, let's uh, walk along together, shall we? Yeah, if you like. You know, Uncle Henry, Christmas is coming on. Yeah. Uh, uh, that uh, was what my sermon was about, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I want? I want to get you full of the Christmas spirit. Well, it's nice to know you bother to think about me this way. Oh, you're a challenge to me, Uncle Henry. I want to teach you what Christmas means. Thank you. And I... Look, let's, let's stop beating around the bush, shall we? I preached a sermon on the Christmas spirit this morning. Did it touch you? Did you get anything out of my sermon? Uh, Minister Graham? Yes, Uncle Henry? <laughs> I was asleep all through your sermon. <laughs> Back in just a moment with the second act of tonight's story from the pages of the Reader's Digest, America's favorite magazine, presented by the makers of Hallmark Cards, America's favorite greeting cards. And now, this is Cy Harris. How are you tonight? I hope you've had a Merry Christmas at your house today, and now at the end of the day, I hope all the presents you've opened and all the cards you've received have given you a deep sense of happiness. The wonderful feeling that your family loves you and your friends care about you and are thinking of you no matter how far away they are. Why, you know, there are some folks I never hear from except at Christmas time. Old school friends I might have lost track of altogether if it hadn't been for those Christmas cards we send each other. They tell me about their children, about the new house they've just bought. All the big events of a lifetime are crowded onto our Christmas cards, aren't they? Sometimes the writing has to run up the side of the card. It's great to get cards from friends you haven't seen for years, to remember the old days and the, the good times you've had together. 
Yes, Christmas cards carry old friendships across the miles and through the years, and sometimes they're the beginnings of new friendships, too. So it's the magic of Christmas that you feel, surrounded with love and affection. And you know, the makers of Hallmark cards are happy to have a little part in this magic. They're glad that Hallmark cards have helped to make millions of homes rich in the things that really count, in love and friendliness this Christmas Day. And now, once again, here's your Hallmark host, Les Tremaine. Our program continues now with the second act of tonight's story, The Only Wise Man, starring Paul Lucas. <laughs> next day, and Uncle Henry is in his home. It is a home to Uncle Henry, even though it is a shanty with only one room. And that one room is a combination living room, kitchen, bedroom, and workroom. Just now, it's a workroom, as Uncle Henry is making a chair for one of the ladies of the town. Come in. I never locked the door. Oh. Hello, Mr. Graham. Hello, Uncle Henry. Like to sit down? Oh, thank you. Ah, uh, I am sorry I went to sleep while you were preaching. I'm sorry I preached such a dull sermon. Oh, I think maybe yours was as good as anybody's. No, no, it must have been pretty bad. No, no. Of course, I didn't hear much of it, but it sounded like all the others. But you know what? What? I just can't listen to people talk about what we ought to do or what we got to do. They do it or they don't. That's all I understand. I never understand talk. You're probably quite right. Oh, no, I am wrong because somebody's got to talk. Somebody's got to tell the kids what's good and what's bad. And somebody's got to tell fools. I am wrong. But that don't change me. I can't listen. I go to sleep. <laughs> well, I, I still say you're probably right. Oh, oh, Minister Graham. Yes? I found out something you ought, you ought to know. What is it? Well... You know where is the old opera house? Yes. It's vacant lot next door. Yes, I know it. Well, there's a wagon now in that vacant lot. A wagon? Yeah, I saw it come. Two pretty tumble-down horses. They, they pulled the wagon in here yesterday. Is in that wagon a man, his wife, and three kids. The name Miller. You've spoken to them? Yeah. The man is sick. Maybe he'll die. Then why are they traveling this way? Well, no money to travel any other way. But why travel at all? They want to go to Arkansas. They want to get there soon, too. The man was born in Arkansas. And he wants to go back there before he dies. They never said so. But that's it. Yeah, that's it, sure, sure. It's foolish, you know. There is a lot of foolishness in the world. Maybe to go home to die is less foolish than go to the county hospital to die. Uncle Henry, why did you tell me about these people? Well, you are the minister. Yeah. Are they hungry? No, just the wife. The others get fed. Well, I'll have to visit them, and I'll have to get the committee on charities in the church to allot them some food. I'd better pass that head, too. They need money. Yes, I'll do that. Good idea. Uh, I wish this hadn't happened on Christmas week. There's so much to do. Oh, well. Here is mine. What? Well, here is my money. One dollar. Won't buy much these days, but... Oh, we can't take your money, Uncle Henry. Did I maybe get it rubbing bangs? No, you got it working hard. That's just the point. You need that money. That family and that wagon need this money. Oh, I won't take it. Then I'll go and give it to them myself. Only then they won't be able to make it go as far as your charity committee that can buy things wholesale. All right, I'll take it. Bless you, Uncle Henry. But uh, I haven't told you why I came here. And? It was to ask you to come to the pageant. Oh, <laughs> well, that was funny. Hey, you. You don't give up on me, huh? Of course not. You know, this whole community is filled with a Christmas spirit. Everybody's full of enthusiasm for our Christmas party. Everybody's either taking part in the pageant or baking cakes for the refreshments or, or selling tickets or buying presents for the kiddies. Everybody but you. Yeah, and you done it. You some fella getting everybody all excited about Christmas. I, uh said everybody but you, Uncle Henry. I know. Will you give me a chance? I, I want you to see Christmas in operation. I want you to feel Christmas in your heart. And I think you will if you'll come to the pageant. 
Uh, this pageant, like a play, no? Yes. You know, I never see a play since I leave Europe. This is your chance. I remember the small boy I saw operas, a fellow named Wagner, we had in the old country, made up a lot of good operas. And plays, that's with no music. A fellow named Ibsen. Yeah, I was 12 years old when I saw those things. And never since? No, never since. Mr. Graham, thank you. I thank you very much. I will come to your pleasure with pleasure. All right, all right. Quiet, quiet, please. <clears throat> On uh, behalf of the cast of the pageant, I want to thank you for your generous applause. And now... We're going to take the presents off the Christmas tree and open them. Oh. Will uh, Brother Wells act to Santa Claus? He sure will. <laughs> Let me at that tree. <laughs> Mr. Wells. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Graham. Don't wait for me. I may be sometime. Well, look at this present. The first one on the tree, and it's for you. Oh, <laughs> oh thank you. I I'll take it along. Well, Mr. Talbot. He's not here, Mr. Graham. I went all through the crowd. No, it, it was very discouraging. Pardon me, Mr. Graham. I don't see why you're so upset that a, a disreputable fellow like Uncle Henry didn't come to the pageant. Because I want to teach Uncle Henry what the spirit of Christmas means. I, I want to make him one of us. Oh, impossible. Uh, maybe not. Because, look. That present? Mm -hmm. It was just handed to me. See? To Minister Graham from Uncle Henry. Well. <laughs> a mail order sugar bowl. No, Mr. Talbot. A present from a friend. I rather value this. Oh, of course. Uh, well, let's go in and join the fun, Mr. Uh, you go. I, I'll be along. I, I'm going to walk down the road and thank Uncle Henry for this present. Uncle Henry! Uncle Henry! Why, it's Minister Graham. Hello, Uncle Henry. Hello. Come in. Folks, meet Minister Graham. This is Mr. and Mrs. Miller, Minister. How do you do? Hello. You're the good man who had that committee send some food to us. Oh, then you people are... Yeah, they are the Millers, the people from that wagon in the vacant lot next to the opera house. Uh, please forgive my husband if he doesn't speak to you. He's sick. He can speak only with difficulty. It's all right, of course. Uh, meet the children. Here. here. Here is little Tom Miller. Hello. Uncle Henry gave me a ball and a man that walks when he got to wind him up. Hello, Tom. <laughs> and look, this is Mary. Little Mary. See? <laughs> Golden hair like in my country. Hello. Are you a friend of Uncle Henry? I certainly am. Uncle Henry is the nicest man I ever met. Now, now, come, Mary. Go back to your place. No. No, wait a minute. What did Uncle Henry give to you, Mary? He gave me... Christmas. God bless you, Uncle Henry. Oh, what a foolish child. All I give her was a dolly. Not even real hair on this dolly. And then the child makes up things about me. You gave me Christmas, Uncle Henry. Oh, by golly. Kids have some imagination, huh? Uncle Henry. Yes? I came to thank you for my present. Oh, it's nothing. You didn't forget anyone, did you? Hope not. I, uh, I'll have to leave. Oh, it's, it's too bad. But, uh, I'd like to talk with you a minute. Would you step outside? Sure, sure. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, goodbye, Mr. Graham. Come on, Uncle Henry. Goodbye, Uncle Henry. So, this is why you didn't come to the pageant, Uncle Henry. Well, I'm sorry. You're sorry. How do you think I feel? I, a minister of the gospel would have left those children and those parents without Christmas. Well, you send them money, you send them food. And forgot everything else. Oh, I did nothing. Gave shelter, spent two dollars. I think you're the only wise man in this village, Henry. Ah, by golly, grown-ups is as bad as kids. Talk, talk is to say nothing. 
You're quite right. And to think I was going to teach you the spirit of Christmas. Uh, well, I don't know much about the spirit of Christmas, Minister Graham. But I bet you it's got something to do with making people smile. It's when people smile, especially it's when children smile, that I know what is this Christmas spirit. It's the spirit of caring about somebody else. It's the spirit of worrying about everyone else's happiness and never thinking of your own happiness. So that you work hard to make everyone else smile, and when you see them smile, by golly, you find you are smiling yourself. And you are happy too. That's Christmas, I bet you. Thank you, Paul Lucas. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Lucas will be back in just a moment, but first, here's Cy Harris again. I was just thinking how good life seems on Christmas Day, and wouldn't it be wonderful if only we could keep this spirit all through the year? We're thinking of others on this day instead of ourselves, but during the year, most of us are so busy that we forget the little things that mean so much. And, and that reminds me of a little present that will help to carry the spirit of Christmas right through the year ahead, the new Hallmark date book. Your friendly Hallmark dealer has one for you. It's his gift to you. It's a beautiful little book, and you'd never think anything so pretty could be so useful. It will remind you of your social engagements, your appointments, everything you want to remember all year long. It will help you to be thoughtful of your friends, to remember their birthdays and their anniversaries. Why, there's space for your full Christmas card list. You might start it now with names you forgot this year. I hope you'll ask for your Hallmark date book tomorrow. And I hope it will help to carry the wonderful spirit of this Christmas day through all the year ahead of us. Thank you, Cy Harris. And now, once again, here is the star of tonight's show who gave us that wonderful portrayal of the only wise man, Paul Lucas. Thank you very much. I enjoyed the part. Now, tell me, what happens New Year's night on the Hallmark program? Oh, we have a thrilling story. Really? About a man who believed he was so great that he swindled the entire world trying to prove it. Quite an idea. Yes, it's more than an idea. It actually happened. Hmm? And who's playing it? Paul Muni. Oh, I shall start my New Year's listening then. I hope all our listeners will. Next Thursday night, ladies and gentlemen, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you a story full of suspense from the Reader's Digest, America's favorite magazine, The Master Swindle, starring Paul Muni. <laughs> will soon be seen in the RKO production Berlin Express. Mr. Lucas was supported by Sidney Smith in the role of Minister Graham. The Only Wise Man was dramatized by Robert Senadella and was based on the true story by Charles Ferguson as it appeared in the Reader's Digest, America's favorite magazine. The Hallmark program was directed by Mark Sloan with music especially composed by Jack Miller. This is Cy Harris speaking for the makers of Hallmark greeting cards. Hallmark cards are sold only by selected quality stores, never sold from door to door. Remember, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And now this is your Hallmark host, Les Tremaine, saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time. See you then. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.